Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here back for yet another episode of the Tamar Let's Play. So this is the second recording session that I am doing for this series, and uh, it's been a while since I've actually looked at this game, so I will have to refresh myself on what's going on in the game in addition to you guys. So if I remember correctly, well, I mean, obviously we're going for a diplomatic victory in this game. We're starting to build some of our unique walls that will give us a lot of diplomatic favor, because we're utilizing monarchy that gives us two diplomatic favor for every renaissance wall, so that will stack up quite nicely with the fact that we are tomorrow so currently we are at six diplomatic favor or six diplomatic points out of 20 so still got a long way to, to go we haven't had the best luck in terms of the world congress this game but hopefully we'll be able to step that up in this episode and i see that we do have the statue of liberty that we will be uh finishing the research on in this civic for civil engineering here so hopefully we'll be able to build that in this episode and uh what do you say let's go ahead and get right on into things one thing that I do want to mention, because I know it's something that I get asked a lot of the time whenever I do Let's Plays, is I have finally increased the UI size, I'm sure, as you can probably notice here. So if you're wondering why everything looks much larger than what it did in the last episode, it's because I finally got off my lazy butt and increased this UI size. So hopefully things will be a little bit easier to read, especially for everybody that watches on something like a phone or an iPad or, you know, anything with a smaller screen. So, yeah, hopefully that's nice and uh, ho hopefully that's nice and good for you guys. And perhaps I can do even do a little bit of editing to zoom in on some parts if... If that will make it even easier to read in addition. I am remembering that we are continuously fighting these Catholic apostles that keep trying to convert all of our cities away from our religion. I'm honestly forgetting what my religious beliefs are. I know that I have pagodas. Oh, that's not the right button. We have a major flood over there. Well, that's actually not even in our territory. But I know that we have pagodas so we get the extra diplomatic favor. We also just get a little bit of extra faith for... Um, Having cities converted, and we also have the cheaper to purchase apostles, so pretty standard religious beliefs as far as, uh, you know, my my typical religious belief selection goes. We also do have this guy that we can use to help produce the Eiffel Tower, or not the Eiffel Tower. Have, did I say these, the Eiffel Tower again whenever I said this before? But the Statue of Liberty to help produce that whenever we are able to finally start doing so. This guy wants to trade us silver, but I think we're going to refuse because... Diplomatic favor is pretty much the most important thing for us this game, more so than if really anything else. How are we doing on suzerainship? So we're not suzerain of Fez, but if we can convert them to a religion, we would be able to. They are really far away though, so that means it would be very difficult to actually be able to keep them converted to our religion, especially since it seems like Poland really likes to spam out their apostles. We are going to go for the Patala Palace as well, just because it does give you one diplomatic victory point. I doubt we'll be able to get it because you do have to be pretty competitive for it but we'll try anyways just to see uh we are very far behind the congo so hopefully we're able to win diplomatic victory before someone else wins like science victory or something because diplomatic victory can sometimes take a while depending on how lucky we get with the world congress in terms of being able to get the right uh things won i mean it will help if we have a lot of diplo favor to be able to influence heavily but still sometimes the ai will just mass outvote you I think we will, we will run skyscrapers right now just because we are going to be building, I mean, obviously, well, I guess we're going to start right now. We're going to start to build the Statue of Liberty. So we would like to be able to get some extra production towards that. I think we'll be able to get the Statue of Liberty pretty quickly here because I think this will take off another 10 turns. And at which point we'll only have, what, 14 turns left, which is it's a very reasonable time to be able to build the Statue of Liberty in. We should go ahead and build a Kevser as well just so that way we get the extra era score from doing so. And on our governor promotion, so I don't really care to actually promote the Void Singers much more because I don't really need any of the other stuff that they have down here. I'd probably rather promote Amani, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I think I'll go ahead and do that. I'll I'll promote Amani. We actually have multiple governor titles. Who else do we want to promote? Maybe get another promotion on Pingala to help us get a little bit of culture yield. We definitely should be getting out some builders and improving some of the tiles over here because we have a lot of unimproved land. It's just chilling in here. We could put a lot of farms down. We could probably get some lumber mills for these cities in here. So all stuff that would be pretty good. We also got a great person, and it is a great admiral. Don't particularly care for a great admiral, but I guess we'll keep them. We could get a free privateer and explore, so you know what? Why not, right? If you hear any jingling in the background, it's because Eugene has gotten a new toy today, so he really wants to play with it, and <laughs> it's got a bell on it. So he is he's just walking around the house, just beating this little toy around, and he's, he's having so much fun, so... You know, I uh, can't complain about Eugene having fun. Okay, Yadviga has declared war on me yet again. Is this the third time? Oh, the Congo have also declared war on me. That's fun. I mean, it's actually... is, in fact, not fun at all. Okay, well, we'll put our little privateer here in the city. Do we have... Okay, let's hopefully try to repair our ancient... Or our walls here. Are these Ren walls? I don't think they are, are they? 
No, they're only ancient walls. That's actually quite bad. I don't think it's going to matter too much, though. Oh, it actually might matter at least a little bit, though. We could recruit a hero again, though, if we absolutely need. Why am I not able to... Oh, I know why. It's because I changed off producing the Statue of Liberty. It's like, why can I not continue to produce it? But that would be why. What do we want to build over here? Maybe let's just get a builder. I think we already have, yeah. We already have the CK there. Over here, we can probably get... Yeah, let's let's get CK in... Or a CK in, uh, in Batumi as well. One, for making it easily... more A little bit more easily defensible. And two, for also just getting the Diplo favor from it. There we go. We've gotten the Kevser, so we have... Gotten the extra era score from producing the first one. I guess we probably probably should have been attacking with that crossbowman as well. I think that guy's now... Oh, he just barely lived. And he's probably going to run away or get a promotion and then be absolutely fine. <laughs> Which is like, man, why you got to do me like that? We should get to field cannons if possible. Which we are actually quite close to. Not terribly far at least. We don't currently have any Niter, though, to be able to upgrade into any Musketman, it looks like. So we could re-recruit... Who did we have? We had Maui, so we could re-recruit Maui. We also had had... Had we had Arthur? Oh, no, okay. He's just deceased, but just owned by someone else. Could also get Hercules, which would be very good. How long? Five turns over there. We can probably get it even shorter over here. Nope, five turns there. A lot of turns there. Eight turns, nine turns, four turns there. I'll just, I'll just get him over here. Why not? Devote to Hercules. He's a really good, a really good hero in addition to you know just the fact that he is strong and just a strong unit. You know. Also finished our industrial zone in Omalo over here, so that will allow us to be able to get out some more workshops and stuff. We could build Huayteo Kali. It's not that good, but it's really the only lake we have up there, besides the Crater Lake. I don't know if the Crater... if this gives extra yields to the Crater Lake. I wouldn't imagine it does, but maybe. They have indeed killed our Kevsur, which I'm not really too surprised about, nor do I particularly care. We have a Nyaumbeba... Nyaumbeba core over here. Fortunately for us, though, we are quite late in the game, so this thing isn't going to be all that strong. It's able to take a few hits, though, so, you know. We should get an entertainment complex as well. Probably somewhere in here where it's fairly centralized. That way it affects a lot of our cities. Yeah, let's go ahead and slap it down right there. What do you say? Still try to kill this catapult, which it looks like it will die. and It'll die to the walls, which I don't think you get era score if you kill them with walls, which is a little bit weird. These guys are trying their best, but I'm pretty sure that they're just going to fail again. And then they're probably just going to have to give us a lot of money. Just like that, we've killed that dude. Oh, what? You Wait, can you not aqueduct a crater lake? Darn it. I'm pretty sure I had talked about that earlier on in this series. I was like, oh, I wonder if you can aqueduct a crater lake. And it appears as though the answer is a definitive no. Hmm. There are quite a few units around here. Slightly cause for concern. Not terribly, but slightly. Luckily, we have the CK up in a lot of these cities, so they should be pretty defensible. And I've lost my builder, which makes me big sad. Hercules is about to come out, though. There he is. He does, obviously, a lot of damage. To pretty much anybody. To whoever he wants, really. I actually just use him to kill the bombard there. That way we hopefully don't have to worry about our walls going down. Oh, this city actually doesn't have a CK either. What am I doing, bro? I'm almost tempted to build an encampment in this city just because I feel like we're getting attacked <laughs> so often. So let's, let's, in, yeah, let's indeed do that. Can we repair our walls here? We can. Let's spend, let's spend the one turn to do that. Let's upgrade this guy. We actually don't have that much gold per turn, I'm, I'm realizing right now. Oh, that's going to make it so we can't finish the CK. Capital is also in... Oh my god, Hercules almost died. I'm pretty sure he's going to be dead. Well, unless we can move this dude and get Hercules into the city, which we can. Which I think is probably a worthwhile thing to do. We'll probably lose the crossbowman now, but... I'm fine with that as long as we keep Hercules. I'm getting a little nervous here. We aren't immediately going to lose the city, but I feel like we could lose the capital, like, fairly shortly. We also, let's get, maybe, let's maybe get Beowulf as well. Let's just get another hero. Okay, thankfully the AI is terrible and they're attacking this city instead. Alright, I think, I mean, we can finish this dude off. Oh, of course he didn't die. <laughs> finish him off with a quadrine. We have to get this 
blob of coursers out here. Okay, we finished off one of the cores there. Ooh, it's not looking the best. We always can send... Maybe let's do this. Let's switch Hercules over here. That way the city gets 88 combat strength, and hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, it's still going to take a good bit of damage, though. Alright, we're kind of hanging on by a thread right now, honestly. And first we're not. We're really not looking too great. Of course, that guy just had to live on like 1 HP. Let's have Hercules chill in there. As he heals up as well, we will get some combat strength back for the city center. Have our crossbowman just rest up for like a turn or two. Hopefully heal. We're going to get bombards in 10 turns as well. Okay, they've backed away from the capital, at least slightly. Except for this ranger that has now appeared. However, we can probably just one-shot him. The fact that we are very far behind in terms of techs and stuff does make this about a million times harder. Let's just kill you. Get you back in the city. Any chance? Okay, we actually don't even have the option to repair outer defenses right now. These guys are just going from city to city. They're just trying to get whatever they can, pretty much, it looks like. Oh, they're back up here now. Let's get him back out there. Put Hercules back in the city center. We finished our CK down here, so we can now dam up this river. We are now into the modern era, and we are in a normal age, so we need to decide what we want to take here. Could go reform the coinage, because we do have five trade route slots, but also we have no trade routes active right now, because I believe that they're all getting just cancelled by the fact that we're in this war, so maybe we could go two arms instead. There are a few cores and armies in our land, so... I think we're going to take that. Maybe let's see. Let's see if that actually is good for us here. I guess we could kill this one right here with Hercules. We will do so. And over here, let's try to kill this guy. Yeah, mixed mixed success there. Could repair outer defenses here, but I think we just want to finish the encampment first. We might as well shoot that musketman while we can. Up here in Omalo, we should probably get ancient walls because we don't have any walls yet. And I really would not like to lose the city because of that. One turn till Statue of Liberty, so we should be able to get it this turn. We've also just had a city-state declare on us, and it is Chinguetti. Alright, the next session of the World Congress. Hmm, what do we vote for here? Double people. So... Oh man, I'm trying to remember what won this last time. I think we can go back and see what won this last time, right? No, we maybe can't. I want to say the Great Scientist wins quite often, so maybe I'll put like four votes into that. I'll put maybe four votes into Yadviga getting double grievances. And then I would like to give myself a lot of votes into this. Maybe I'll go for eight. Maybe I'll put one more into the Great Scientist one, or I can actually afford two more into that. And we will vote yes for the World's Fair as well. All right, so we're hoping for Great Scientist, Yad Viga, and then obviously me here. Please? We, we, we kind of need a lot of Diplo points. Oh, and we did finish the Statue of Liberty, so let's uh, let's take a moment to appreciate its build animation. Woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. How pretty. All right. Great Engineer, none. We did win everything else, though. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's check how many diplomatic victory points we have. So we're all at 14 now. So did we gain? Wait, what were we at? We were at six. So we gained eight in that in that one that one turn of diplomatic uh, or of World Congress. We actually gained eight points. I mean, we also did build Statue of Liberty in that turn, so that definitely does contribute a good bit. But that's a pretty pretty market improvement. So now we are definitely, we are by far in first place in, in as far as the diplomatic victory is concerned. The next person has only six. So that was quite quite the good acceleration towards our diplomatic victory here. And we should be able to get some, oh, we of course didn't kill him. We can kill him with a quadrine for that sweet, sweet arrow score. I need to build another builder over here since I accidentally lost mine to the, the heathens of the Polish do now have Beowulf, which means Beowulf can just stand out here and probably just shred people. Hopefully, as we continue to just bombard these people with attack after attack, they'll eventually want to make peace with us. Can hopefully try to repair our outer defenses over there and maybe upgrade to a CK as well. We'll just finish off that dude, just to finally get him out of here. I'm tired of his crap. Maybe we could build a Hagia Sophia. Hmm. It's almost tempting. 
Hi, Sophia is a pretty good wonder. We could go for it. Then we could maybe try to convert him to our religion. That would be that would be quite spicy. We also could go for Chichen Itza. This is a decent Chichen Itza city. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's try for Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Not the easiest name of a wonder to produce or to pronounce. Chicken pizza is a, a common alternative. We finished our encampment over here, which means now let's repair these outer walls and then maybe upgrade to a CK as well. One to get more era score, or not era score, to get more diplomatic favor, and two also just to increase our defensive strength. Can we get pagodas in any of these other cities? We should be able to, right? Or do we already have them in most of these cities? We probably have them in most, if not all, of these cities, it looks like. Except for the ones that don't have holy sites, which we should build holy sites and then get the pagoda as well. The pagoda is a pretty good one. Oh, okay, of course the one in this city has been destroyed. Let's upgrade our walls there, though. Who do we want to promote next? We also could get Reyna. I actually think I want fisheries on Liang. I would like... Okay, she already is in the capital. Then we can put some fisheries on these tiles and make them really, really quite strong. I think for this one... I, I also... I got. I was amazed. I didn't realize that Craftsman was changed to be a military policy card now. It, I mean, it previously used to be an economic one, but now it's, now it's a military one, which I think is interesting. This actually is a decent game for Craftsman for us. Probably don't need skyscrapers anymore because we, we already have built the wonder that is, you know, the, the biggest one that we really need. We also could run... Hmm... We also could run, run War of Religion, since these other opponents that we're fighting do follow another religion. Let's run that one for a little bit, at least. Just to really help finish getting rid of all of these guys. Just getting them out of our territory. Hopefully they'll pay us a lot for peace. Now we're going to get a little bit of sassy from the future action here, because at this point in the game, my voiceover recording had crashed, but it didn't make any notifications or anything like that, because pretty much all of my notifications are muted whenever I have OBS running to record, so I didn't know that it had crashed, so I'm going to have to just, you know, do a, a post voiceover here, so I'm going to compress things a lot more here, just because I don't exactly know what I was saying, because it's been at least a week since I've recorded this at this point, so I'm just going to try to, you know, give you this synopsis of what happened for the rest of this game here. So continuing this war with the Congo and Poland, I had had Beowulf there, and the useful thing with Beowulf is that he's able to instantly kill some units, so I used him to take out some of the really tough units that the Congo had, like this cavalry army here. That helped me end the war a little bit faster. I also was able to upgrade the field cannons, which really helped up my defensive abilities, just because not only did I have better units in the cities, but upgrading my range units means that my wall attacks would be stronger as well, so this really helped me kind of push away some of these units that were in my land. After a while, I was able to eventually make peace with the Congo. They offered a trade deal. They were originally offering oil and stuff like that, but I wasn't really too interested in that. I just wanted straight up gold per turn because my gold per turn was pretty bad at this point. So I was trying to negotiate this. So one of the things is that in the previous update, they broke the make this deal work button. So the only way to actually make deals work is to manually go and guess and check to see what the actual number of something is, at, at, at which point the AI will accept the deal. So it took me a while here to just go and you know, play around with the amount of gold per turn that I was trying to negotiate out of the deal until I finally found something that worked and I was able to make peace. After that, I was able to put down my diplomatic quarter. I definitely should have put this down earlier. It's one of the districts that I'm, if I'm being totally honest, I often overlook and I don't play very many diplomatic games, so I kind of forget that it exists, but I should have put it down earlier because it does give you some diplomatic favor and also, you know, it allows you to get extra bonuses from your city-states that you are the suzerain of, so probably should have put this down earlier, but that's okay. Uh, you know, better, better late than never, I suppose. So, kind of to pass the time, whenever you're playing a diplomatic game in the late game like this, there's really not too much to do in between sessions of the World Congress unless you have to build wonders or things like that. Uh, so, what I did was I went on a little bit of a religious adventure to pass the time, so tried to convert the Congo over to my religion. I just bought a bunch of apostles because we had had a ton of faith saved up at this point. I had some minor success there, I was able to get a few cities converted, but eventually I started to get kind of frustrated because the Congo had, I think, three or four apostles that had the debater promotion, which were just tearing through my apostles, and I was like, alright, I'm done wasting my time doing this, I'm kind of getting irritated with this, so I eventually just, you know, got, got my apostles out of there and just left the Congo as is. Um, also in this time I sent Beowulf to go meme the Polish just because I was irritated that they were still at war with me and didn't want to make peace So I sent Beowulf over there did some raising on some of their districts attacked their city sometimes and just made them a little scared They eventually made peace with me quite 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 a while into it 
I also did build the Hagia Sophia. The Hagia Sophia is a pretty good wonder for religious games because you get an extra charge on your missionaries and apostles to spread your religion. So for a religious victory, that's really good. It wasn't really super useful this game because I wasn't really spreading my religion a whole bunch. So didn't really need it too much. But I built it anyways, just you know, I don't know, just to have something to build, I guess. I, like it is, it is a wonder that I like anyways. So I figured if I eventually want to spread my religion, I still could if I needed to become the suzerain of some city states or something like that. So just built it kind of for the memes. At this point, there was the next session of the World Congress that came up, so this was pretty important. So, as far as the what I voted here, I voted for minus 50% production cost for units, because that one almost always wins. Uh, there's a few cases where sometimes gold will win, but uh, 50, minus 50% 50 production pretty much always wins. So, if you have even a few votes to put into it, you can pretty much guarantee that that's when you'll get... I also voted to give myself culture bombing. That one's kind of a random guess. Some I feel like more often than not, somebody winning the culture bombs is what happens, but uh, it's not always 100%. So once again, with this one, since it's kind of spread out, just having a few votes in there is normally enough to influence it in your favor. And then I just dumped the rest of my votes into giving me two victory points because obviously, you know, I'm trying to win a diplomatic victory here. Obviously, it'd be very good to be able to get a lot of victory points. So after this, I was able to win all of these, which means that I gained four points. So at this point, I was up at 19, and I was really hoping to get a quick a, a, a quick extra Diplo point from something like a Wonder or a Tech or a Civic. But unfortunately, none of the Techs and Civics were really close, and none of the Wonders that give Diplo points were available, or I had already built them. So wasn't really able to do that. So at this point, it was pretty much just time to wait for the next session of the World Congress. So in the time, I just put down a Government Plaza. Once again, quite late. I always, I always kind of neglect my Government Plazas, but... Uh, getting the foreign ministry can be good because it does give you a little bit of diplomatic favor generation per turn. The other thing that I did was, so my cities were having some amenity problems and I had like 11,000 faith. So I was like, you know what, let's buy a great merchant that gives me a unique luxury. So I bought Levi Strauss for the jeans, uh, just so that way it would be able to, you know, kind of help, help soothe some of my amenity issues that I was having. Eventually, though, the last session of the World Congress came up, and this one was pretty important because if I lost this one, I really didn't want to have to wait 30 turns to try to do, you know, another session of the World Congress. And unfortunately, the things in this one were not super easy to predict. So we had the one about uh, tourism from Great Works. Normally, doubling wins, but not always. But I had quite a bit of diplomatic favor at this point, so I knew that I had quite a lot of votes to be able to put in. So um, I voted for doubling Great Works of Writing because that one is pretty common. Uh, for the uh, gaining combat strength, gaining combat strength pretty much always wins, and it's normally either melee or ranged, so I put quite a few votes into in, into winning for plus 5 for ranged, and then this is the thing here that I think is a good tip for some beginners if you're playing a diplomatic victory, so when you need to get one victory point, you should vote against yourself uh, in, in terms of, you know, you should vote that you will lose two diplomatic victory points because... In because whenever you are at 19 victory points, pretty much every single AI will dump almost all of their diplomatic favor into voting against you on that one. So it's pretty much going to win. It's almost impossible to be able to overcome the cost of all of the AI uh, all collectively dumping their diplomatic favor in. So it's more wise to just put one vote into you losing because you know that that's going to win. So winning that vote means that you get one diplomatic victory point even though you lose two. So as, as a net, you only lose one. And then uh, being able to win the other two. So what I did was after putting one vote in there, I just split my diplomatic favor up, uh, among the other two things that I was voting on. Because this way, if I was able to win three of them and then also lose two points from the one that won, would mean that I gain one as a whole, so I would be at 20 and I would win the game. So whenever you are at 19 victory points, give yourself one vote to lose two diplomatic victory points, so that way at least it will be mitigated as well. And then just kind of hope, hope and hopefully you will have enough influence to be able to dump a lot of diplomatic favor into the other two things because if you win those then you'll still gain diplomatic victory points as a whole. So fortunately for me, I did indeed win, and this was the end of the game. So, uh, yeah, this definitely wasn't the cleanest game as Tamar. I mean, Tamar also is not the best leader in the game. She's quite bad, so uh, that was something. But the thing is, though, honestly, with the change to Monarchy now that gets Diplomatic Favor from Walls, I don't think that Tamar is terrible. I mean, she's bad for pretty much everything except for Diplomatic Victory, in my opinion. I mean, all of her other things are just terrible, but being able to get a lot of Diplomatic Favor means that you can pretty easily win a Diplomatic Victory, because even this game, like, we had some some struggles in the early World Congress sessions and being able to get Diplo or being able to win some of the uh, resolutions, but it didn't really matter because we were able to dominate a lot of the later ones after we had gotten our our CK and uh, Monarchy as well. So uh, for that reason, she actually is decent in terms of the diplomatic victory. 
So I hope that you enjoyed, and I'm sorry that this voiceover had to be redone, uh, but you know, sometimes tech problems happen, and what are you going to do about it though? But thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.